are here together now, and um, I am very happy to be doing this TFB Spotlight on one of our TFB Premium members this time. Uh, it's Cindy Nolk, and she has been um, a freelance bookkeeper for quite a while. We'll hear her story. And she's also been uh, a subscriber of the TFB blog for quite some time, as well as a member right from the beginning of TFB Premium. And I'm just so happy because I've been able to see Cindy grow her business, and I thought she would be a wonderful inspiration to all of us freelance bookkeepers to see what she has done in the past and also what she's doing right now that's really exciting and maybe even some of the pitfalls that she's bumped into because we've all been there. So thank you so much Cindy for uh, taking the time to do this quick interview. Thank you Gabrielle for having me. It's awesome for me because I started with you when I first started my business back in 2009 down in Florida. Wow, that's fantastic. I didn't realize we were right from the beginning together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you again so much. And why don't we just dive in? I have some questions for you. So let's get to know you a little bit better. Um, you know, I have a little bit of an advantage over our community just because there's certain people like you that I've seen over the years, but not necessarily everybody else knows uh, your story. So let's, and I don't know all of it either, so I'm looking forward to it. So please give us a little background on yourself and why you decided to start your freelance bookkeeping business back in 2009. Well, back in 2009, I was living in Florida because my dad was sick and um, I was always in the automotive industry. The family business was mm -hmm. the automotive and I learned everything there, the customer satisfaction and um, when the automobile industry had their crisis, I tripped upon the QuickBooks Pro Advisor website and thought, ah, that would be perfect. I could do accounting and dabble with the computers and help small businesses. And so I started my certification there, and that's how I got started. Wow, wow. Okay, yeah, you know, it's funny. There's a similarity there because that was one of the big things when I started my business way back when is uh, the Pro Advisor program, the certification, so we think alike. <laughs> um, so what type or how much formal education have you had in bookkeeping? Because you were in that your family business. Do you have any kind of accounting degree or certification? Yes, I got my accounting degree from the University of Buffalo, mm -hmm. and I'm certified in QuickBooks Desktop and online, as well as Bill.com and my most recent Exciting is Profit First. I'm yes. now a certified Profit First professional. Congratulations. And yeah, I'm Thank sure you. I want to hear about that. <laughs> but that's excellent. So you have a really solid um, background, expertise, you know, academically as well for doing the freelance bookkeeping because not all of us do. Uh, <laughs> what was the biggest challenge in getting your business off the ground? Well, because I was living in Florida and it was 2009 during our recession. It getting clients because there was high unemployment and high foreclosures mm -hmm. and I thought I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that stop me and everybody thought I was crazy I'm like eh, mm -hmm. whatever <laughs> so what I did is I went on the website um, for the county that I lived in and found out the new businesses oh. and started sending I'd send out 10 postcards a week and I would follow up with them and ended up getting of course ironically enough some automotive companies, uh -huh. auto repair shops and trucking companies mm -hmm. and um, at the time I was working also part-time for a nonprofit orchestra oh, and cool. their CPA um, recommended me to some condo associations so I also did some condo association work. Did a lot of nonprofits down there which that kind of took a turn when I moved back here. Uh, uh. So really you got the automotive businesses from the postcard mailings and the others maybe from word of mouth? Is that how they worked? Referrals, exactly. Ah, very good. So that is how you got your first few clients. Now did you learn to do that by sending out, you know, that's kind of traditional marketing to send out the postcards to the new businesses. Did you learn that from the automotive business? Yes. Where did you learn to do that? Yeah, We did a lot of postcard mailings reminding people to come in and get their inspections and we follow up for customer satisfaction because my dad was very customer oriented. It was always like, remember the golden rule. 
customer's <laughs> always right. Is yes. It? <laughs> <laughs> customer's right. always right. That was great practical, like, foundation for you for running a business. You know, oh. like, you knew all the accounting stuff, but to be able to know what it's like dealing with clients as well. Yeah. Now, you've hinted at it, but does your business specialize? Yes. I specialize mostly in QuickBooks Online. I uh -huh. get call me, oh, do fresh books, do zero, do this, mm -hmm. do that. I'm like, nope, sticking with QuickBooks Online. And as far as industries, I still do automotive. It's in my blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, but mostly now it's service businesses specializing with contractors. I have like mm -hmm. a lot of plumbers and mm -hmm. uh, heating companies and you know, sprinkler companies and, you know, what else? Um, <laughs> I, I, I have a very diverse group, but mostly they would fall within the category of service contractors. Ah, I see. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they have very specific needs. Interesting on the QuickBooks Online, does that mean you're not supporting clients on QuickBooks Desktop anymore? No, I still do QuickBooks Desktop when I have to. <laughs> Uh, okay, I like that when I have to. So what do you do, because I'm going to put you on the spot here with the uh, specializing, if a client comes to you and they are using FreshBooks, Zero, Sage, something else, how do you deal with that? Actually, I haven't. I had one customer who called me. Um, he was on Peachtree. Uh -huh. okay. Peachtree. Oh. I said, how did you get my name? He goes, oh, I found it on the Peachtree website. I said, that's really interesting. I said, because mm -hmm. I don't know Peachtree. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, I specialize in QuickBooks. He goes, oh, that's great. I want to switch to QuickBooks. Ah, so that <laughs> Because I out. have the software, and so I set him up, you know. So it was kind of ironic. He says, said my picture was on the Peachtree website, and I came home and looked on the computer. I couldn't find it. I, I don't you know, know what it is? If he already had the QuickBooks software, he probably found you on the QuickBooks website because yeah, <laughs> you were a pro advisor. So that's where most the, the pro advisor website is where most of my clients that and oh really? And most yeah, of your clients come through the the pro advisor database. Uh huh. That and uh. CPAs. I have mm -hmm. like five different CPAs that I deal with that um, keep me very busy. Excellent. So everybody listening, this is a good point mm -hmm. that Cindy has built strategic alliances with CPAs. Uh, boy, and I could go down that one pretty quick too to say, how did you build up those relationships with the CPAs? Well, ironically enough, because I was from the Buffalo area and having the family business and coming from a large family, we knew a lot of people. And they knew me, and they knew because I had been a controller at a large automotive group here also that um my name got around <laughs> I knew a lot I knew a lot of CPAs that were friends and um relatives that were CPAs that we kind of mm -hmm. birds of a was it birds of a feather flock together <laughs> yep yep it's true it's true so I guess the lesson there is it really is all of your contacts, even personal yes. contacts can exactly. end up leading to building those strategic relationships. That's great. Thank Absolutely. you for sharing that. So where are you now in your business? Have you reached your initial goals? Or maybe I should ask, what was your initial goal when, since you started your business in 2009? So you were starting from scratch, you got your first few clients. What was your goal for your business first? <laughs> Truthfully, I really, when I first started, it was just a means of paying bills. Mm -hmm. I always wanted my own business. When my daughter was a baby, I tried to do it, but that was back in 1987, and the, I just didn't mm -hmm. have enough technology that I knew to do it. Um, I really wanted to really specialize in the automotive business because of my experience, my extensive experience there. Mm -hmm. um, but now... What I really like the best, is, my goal now is to, I love setting up companies with QuickBooks. Hmm. I love getting them on the right course, setting up their, setting their QuickBooks up, making sure everything's set up properly, everything's put in, and training them. And then mm -hmm. maintaining that relationship with them, doing the analysis, and of course, profit first. Yeah. 
Yes. I mean, profit first is just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, so tell us a little more about that with the profit first. So now you have the QuickBooks. So if you get a client that comes to you and either you're setting them up on QuickBooks, so they're coming maybe from desktop going to online or right. they don't have a bookkeeping system because of the type of clients that you're serving. I'm sure a lot of them are pencil Shoe and box. paper. Or, <laughs> yeah, they're not, they don't really have a system. So you're setting them up, getting them trained to whatever amount of the work they're going to do and then what? Then I How do you get them. over to that profit first part? Yeah, I train them and you know, you, you, a lot of them think they know accounting. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've hit that. Mm -hmm. And um, mostly now it's, it's showing them, setting up those with profit first, setting up those guardrails so that you know, they have the money to pay the sales tax. And most important, yeah. they're, the point that we were at when we started, okay, we're starting this because we need to have an income to pay our own bills. Right. and setting up those guardrails so that they have money for their profit and money for their taxes and money to pay themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a funny story I'll share with you. Okay. Had a client, I had um, a prospect call me who had found me on the ProAdvisor website and I hadn't put anything about Profit First on there yet. He was interested in doing QuickBooks Online. He installs granite countertops, strictly granite countertops. So um, I went to meet with him, and he told me how he had had a business previously doing kitchen cabinets, but he says he kept making all this money, but his top line was getting bigger and his bottom line was getting smaller. Ah. So um, he ended up closing the business. Mm. And I said, I says, oh, and then you went into the counters. And he said, yeah. I says, you know, I have to be honest with you. I says, you're a perfect candidate for what I call the profit first methodology that I'm very active in. I thought this person was going to jump up and kiss me. You're a profit <laughs> first professional. I I was I love that book. I went and set up my bank account and I'm like I was like floored. I came home and called Mike and he couldn't believe it. So, yeah, there it is. I have my five key. He has a copy of it now. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody hasn't, get the, to the camera. There we go. <laughs> um, it's a book, if you haven't seen it before, that's written by Mike Michalowicz that is on Amazon. And um, it's a very simple system for any business to be more profitable. And there is, they've set it up so that bookkeepers and accountants can really help small businesses use the system. And that's what Cindy's doing. So that's what she's talking about. So this guy had already heard of Profit First and wanted but you to know how He went and got the bank accounts, but he didn't know what to do with it once he got there, you know. Yeah, and, right, right. Uh, you know, Technically, contractors are difficult to set up because they're out in the field all the time. It's really mm -hmm. hard to nail them down and get the information. So you do a lot of chasing, yeah. you know. But he says, I want to do this right and I want to do profit first. So it worked out awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. And in and, and your specialty, because they're out in the field, they tend to be shoebox type clients. Have you used any kind of technology like with an app to be able to have them snapping things with their phone to get that information to you easily? Absolutely. They, they're on the road. They go to the bank. They take, cop they take pictures with their cell phones or their checks, they, and they send it to me. I have the deposit slip in the checks, and I just go into QuickBooks and put it in, and they take a picture of the invoice, their bills, and they send them to me, and I put their bills in, and... It makes Good. it really easy. Excellent. Excellent. I also That's have great. them putting, I, um, I use a lot of um, online storage, you know, the Dropbox uh -huh. and the Google right. Drive. So. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's great. Do you use any other kind of apps that help with that? Um, yeah, I use, um, what's the, what is it called? Let me see. I made my notes here. <laughs> I use a, a project manager called GQs through Google oh, okay. Mail. Okay. It, it integrates. It's not through Google, but it integrates with Google, mm -hmm. and it's great for people like us that have rec a lot of recurring transactions because you mm -hmm. set it up once, and you can color code all your clients and put them in, and it 
um, reminds me. So they can send me an email, and if I have to follow it up, I can put that onto my GQs, and it integrates to my calendar, and it just keeps moving until I say, okay, this is done, and oh, I check it off, and it's um, real easy and very inexpensive. Thank you. That's a that's a great tip because I I think I've heard of GQs before, but I've never looked into it. So yeah, I have to take a look yeah. at that one. Yeah. So if you had to start all over again from scratch, what would you do differently in your business? Probably everything every other book freelance bookkeeper does. <laughs> I'd start out higher. <laughs> with oh, my your price. rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're, you're always catching up, and you think. You don't stop and think that, oh, okay, if I take a vacation, I'm not going to get paid. And mm -hmm. I have to pay, I ha I'm paying all the Social Security and Medicare and unemployment. Yep. And you don't think of those things and you think, you know. Um, but Mike always brought up a really good point and I never thought of it this way. You set your rates too low. People think you don't know what you're doing. Yep, that's true. You know, so that was that was my biggest thing, and um, there was something that I would um, do more marketing. I, I mm -hmm. relax on that. I mean, I did some, but I I wouldn't yep. say shy, but I'm not. You know, you're not. You're not an extrovert. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of us are not. Uh, we we want to go hide. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. My friends go, oh, well, I said, well, it's different. I know you. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, marketing is usually one of the biggest challenges. We all and, and having our rates high enough. So, like mm -hmm. you said. But what are some of the things that you would, if you had to start again from scratch, what would you do the same? Um, I would, I would keep, how do I put it, um, I'm very responsive to my clients. My cl oh. Every single one of my clients is like, ah, you, you know, they can call me and I will respond to them like within a short time period. And they're like, nobody ever returns our phone calls. We can't stand mm -hmm. it when the accountants are, and to me it's the customer service aspect that I try and do. Another thing that they really like is the fact that I give them documentation. When I train them on something new, mm -hmm. I give them backup so that they can put it in the folder that they originally got when they initially started with me. I give them a folder and it has all my information in it and my business cards and they can keep it in there and it's a, it says Cindy's Mobile Bookkeeping on it and mm -hmm. it's all in one one spot where they can find it. Excellent. Now, I didn't realize the name was Cindy's Mobile Bookkeeping. Why does it say Mobile Bookkeeping? Well, originally when I was down in Florida, I was going to have to do a lot of traveling because uh -huh. everything is so far and few between. Mm -hmm. But the take on it now is that my customers are mobile and I teach them how to do things in mobile. Smart. You know, Smart. With the apps, you know. With the Expensify and Constant Contact and the ability for keeping track of their time and everything, I, mm -hmm. you know, QuickBooks Online, I'm like, they're like, wow, I said, you could do it on your phone. Give mm -hmm. your customer an invoice here. They see, look, and I, and I show them how to use the Go Payment with the, with the swiper and yeah. they think yeah. it's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great positioning on that, too. Excellent. So you've you've done quite well. Um, so what have you found to be the best way to market? Speaking of marketing, your services to get new clients. You talked about what you did in the beginning, but what about now? What would you say is the what works the best in your years of experience now for marketing? Mine is the Pro Advisor web, still the Pro Advisor mm, website, right. and um, the CPAs. I also am mm. an ADP partner with the payroll because payroll, yeah. I do offer payroll service but I really don't want to be tied down having to do someone's pay checks every week mm -hmm. so if they really really want me to do their payroll I will do it but I train them how to do the weekly checks mm -hmm. on QuickBooks Online for accountants and then I do the quarterlies and the tax deposits and the W-2s and things like that. Um, 
The other thing that I've gotten into is sending out newslet monthly newsletters. Oh. Now you're sending them by email or by paper? How are you doing that? I do it through email, through Constant Contact, and it's um, specialized with QuickBooks Online. It's a newsletter for it gives them tips on how to use QuickBooks Online better. Oh, great. Now, are you writing that content or are you getting that from someplace else? No, I, I buy it through Ghost Partners. Yep, yep. So that's a tip. Yeah, Ghost Partners has been around for a while. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And you can always leverage that content as well as far as your training goes. Right. Um, you know, because you can you can do more. Now, are most of your clients local in your local area? Um, most of them are, but I do have client. I have clients in California and Florida. Okay. Okay. So you consider yeah, yourself North Carolina. a virtual. Yeah. You're a virtual bookkeeper. Yes. Mm, very good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I I, the reason. I, Go ahead. I prefer, I'm sorry. I prefer virtual because you can get more done. It's all the traveling just takes up too mm. much time. Oh yeah, it's much more efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, the reason why I asked though is because in the marketing, when we're virtual bookkeepers, we're able to our marketing can spread out much further. When we're local uh, virtual bookkeepers, you know, we're still targeting a specific area, so the marketing right. would be tweaked a little bit differently. But excellent. That's good. I have a so website too. So yeah, good, good, good. I think everybody, you if you're virtual, you, have, you, got, you have to have, you have to. Have. Now, do you post your um, newsletter? You send it out by email with constant contact, but do you also post it on your website? That's a good idea. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> Never thought of that. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. great idea. Okay. Just well, good. I'm glad I could. Share a tip. Just, you know, the mind is always going. It's yeah. crazy, but it's always going. <laughs> okay. Um, and is there any specific tools, websites, software, or services that you'd recommend that have been a big help in your business? Now, you've mentioned a few of them, but what would you say are the, the best ones that you'd recommend to other freelance bookkeepers? Um, profit first, mm -hmm. of course. Um, I use Practice Ignition. Have you heard of that? I have heard of it, yes. Practice Ignition is awesome for putting together your uh, proposals and your engagement letters because it integrates with QuickBooks and you can have your services there and you can customize it. So it works, it just makes it so much easier mm -hmm. to put together. That, um, so I do use that and of course constant contact for my newsletters right. and the GQs. Yeah, the GQs. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. That's good. Um, and of course, I'd highly recommend Profit First as well. <laughs> it, it's just, it's a wonderful way to get towards the the uh, consultative, which is really where I think our whole industry is going. Oh, it has to. That's yeah. absolutely what I'm trying to do is do the setups and then maintaining them through um, the consultation and the analysis. And um, it's funny because we've all had those clients where they look at the bottom line and you tell them, oh, you made money this year. And they're like, right. where's the money? Right. You know, show me the money. Where'd the money go? You know. Mm -hmm. So profit first is awesome, and it gives you that. Um, it gives you that tool to help them change their behaviors and set up. Right. Set up some guardrails that yeah, it just helps us from falling off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a question now. Are you using profit first in your business? Yes, I am. Very good. Absolutely. And do you find that that helps you? in working with your clients and helping them to, because it's changing habits, it does that actually help them change too because they know that you're doing it yourself? I think it absolutely does mm -hmm. and it helps me like I went and did um, a proposal, I did a profit first assessment for a client, an existing client last week and um, he just wasn't getting it. So I, so I said, okay, well, let me show you this, you know. So I showed him the profit first, and I went through the assessment, and there was still too many numbers for him. So I said, okay, yeah. let's, look at, let's look at your expenses. What's this? Oh, I meant, to, I, meant to, I meant to cancel that. Oh, I meant to change that, you know. And I said to him, I says, so when you cancel that, you get to take that money and put it into your profit account or put it in your owner's pay account. Oh, I like that idea, you said, you know. So then it was sort of like they could relate to it then because you were giving them very mm -hmm. specific things to do. 
Yeah, so it's really a valuable service to provide for clients. And I read something recently too, just this past week, about how the bookkeeping role is changing. I guess that it was in Australia that the um, bookkeeping is being totally automated. I, I cannot imagine that it's 100% gonna go away, but what we really need to do is exactly what you're doing, Cindy, is helping the clients. You know, it used to take so long to do the bookkeeping mm -hmm. so that the business owners needed our help just to have their numbers done for compliance, but to ha just to make the business function. But they didn't really look at all of the numbers. Now it's like this golden opportunity to really help businesses. And we are the perfect ones to do it. Exactly. So. You know, exactly. that's, that's why I'm so excited about all the success that you're having as well, um, specifically with Profit First, but just in general with your business, because we wouldn't have to use Profit First. It's just a simple method to really help our clients. But I think as it, the bigger picture is, bookkeepers need to be moving to this place where we're really helping the businesses, not only for helping the businesses, but for our own survival too. Right. Because eventually, it's going to be a dying profession when you're talking about data entry. In fact, um, I will re leave it unmentioned which organization this is, but it is one that is in our space, the bookkeeping space. It's an organization for bookkeepers. And I was just reading an article that they had put out and they were giving tips on how to do more data entry. <laughs> and I just really? I shook my head to think, really? <laughs> Let's get into the 21st century. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if if you're a bookkeeper or are just going to start your bookkeeping business and thinking that it's mostly data entry, don't. It's much yeah. more than that. And we really need is. to step up to it. And Cindy's a fantastic example of that. So, again, thank you for being the champion on this to, to show <laughs> show us. Um, so what advice do you have for fellow freelance bookkeepers who are just getting started? I, we know I just gave mine. Um, or those who have been struggling to really get their business off the ground? Because there are many freelance bookkeepers who, you know, they like you and like me, really, when I very first started way back when it was to help supplement the income. And, you know, what if they're still struggling? They're still having a hard time. They're still can't find clients as an example. What would you say? What would be your best advice? I think the biggest thing for me that has really helped me grow my business is the fact that I've learned the automation. And I don't have a problem showing the, my clients how to automate it because I don't want to do compliance stuff. And if they don't want to do it, I've just brought my daughter on board where she's going to she's going to do the compliance stuff and I can go out and do the the setups and the analysis and she's really good at it because she learn she's learning the analytics of it also mm. and she wants to get into it and she picks it up quick and I think that's what it is where you get to clients and they think they called me up and say oh, I need help with my QuickBooks and I had one client who called me this was like four years ago I was down in Florida and he called up and he said I just found out that my secretary uh oh um, was convicted of embezzling fifty thousand dollars five years ago. I go, how long has she been an employee? She's five years. And I closed the QuickBooks. I closed my laptop, and I says, "You have other issues that we need to discuss." And I went mm -hmm. through with the internal processes and how to set those up. And I went to his office and redistributed the jobs and all this. And now he's looking into building. He's looked into several other businesses to buy. He sends me his financials and I analyze them and he calls me for everything. He has a problem with his employees. He calls me and asks me how to handle it. So it's it's that that trusted advisor that I think is so important that, that as bookkeepers and accountants that you have to get into if you're going to make a go of it. Yeah. Um, because the, the the bank's offering bill payment and you have bill down and you have all these, you know, they don't need someone to do that. They only want to pay, you know, 10 or 15 bucks an hour to do data input, which is really all it's worth. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, they need someone to help them analyze the numbers so that they can have good numbers and 
make good business decisions to grow their business and that's basically where we come in yeah. that's that's how I advertise myself yeah that's excellent excellent advice uh, because if we are looking if when I say we meaning if we're or in our bookkeeping business and we're just looking to balance you know do the re the reconciliations and make sure everything balances and just get the work done and then be done and out of there we'd be better off getting a job right um, whereas taking on that role of helping the clients to see what the numbers mean or if something doesn't look right to bring it up and talk to them and care about their success as well that's I would say that from here it looks like that's the secret to your success so, very good okay. anything you. final that you want to share with us no just Thank you so much. It's been awesome working with you and look forward to more TFP. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Cindy. I and saw look, in my email box and the August training is then I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, every month we have a, a new training lesson. So, And, and Cindy is a, a charter member. She's been there since we started, so it's been a few years. So thank you for being a loyal TFB Premium member. Yay. Thank All you right. for offering it. You do an awesome job. Well, thanks. And we will check in probably with you it's after some time pass and, and see how you're doing and cheer you on. So thank you for being great. a great role model. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs>